Hey guys, welcome to another Proxmox video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can automate things in Proxmox using Ansible. And in particular, essentially creating a VM from a template uh, in Proxmox. So we'll be essentially reworking our um, Ansible playbook that we created that we used to use um, for VMware, but we're going to tune it to Proxmox so that we will essentially be creating Proxmox virtual machines um, and using that when we do uh, new videos um, for any you know self-hosted services and things like that. So let's get started. All right, so there are a few things that we'll need to do, but the first thing that we'll want to do is go and edit our Ansible Playbooks repository. Um, but before we do that, we can look at Ansible Proxmox um, collection essentially because we will need to s install the collection um, and there's a few different um, things that we would need um, so there's there's multiple things in here so it's just the community general um, in here but we'll be using a very sp uh, specific Proxmox module which will be the KVM module here so we'll be using uh, the KVM virtual machines and Proxmox cluster so the first thing in here is we'll need to make sure that the collection community general is installed because if we don't have that, um, essentially this won't work this module. So um, there's a few ways to do this, but I found it the easiest, especially if you don't have too much going on. Um, you can actually just add it as kind of like a requirement uh, in your repository. So you can make a collections uh, folder and in that folder, you can just make a requirements.yaml. Um, so essentially, this will just install the collections that you define in here. Um, so in this case, we'll just do community.general. Um, and that should be that should be pretty much it for the collections. Um, but you can add more, so you can just do hyphen and, and other collections as well if you needed to do other things. Um, now, what we'll do here is essentially take a look at what we have here. So everything after... Um, this task we'll keep because this will essentially still set, you know, the VM, the network, the host name and all that. And we want to still keep that. Um, but what we want to do, so we'll, we'll edit and we'll replace some stuff, um, from Proxmox template. Um, in this case, I wanted to use localhost, but I couldn't get it to work because it was in a container essentially. Um, so it uses an execution node to do this. Um, and the specific module uses certain um, Python um, things that I couldn't use. So I, I actually created a build host. So essentially you, we would just SSH to this build host and it would run this task, um, which we'll do. So what we'll do here is essentially remove the VMware related stuff. And then we'll start building out um, the specifics in regards to creating the VM. Um, so it doesn't say in here, but I ran through it multiple times. Um, but what we'll need to do is actually install um, a few Python modules. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is make sure install Python, Python 3 pip. We we'll want to make sure that, that is installed so that we can install the modules. So we'll just make sure built in yum um, name Python 3 pip state present um, and we'll just make sure that we, we essentially do it as root. So after installing Python 3 pip, we'll have to install a few other Python modules. So in this case, we won't want to install setup tools module via pip. So what we can do is use the Ansible built in pip uh, to essentially uh, install it. So setup tools and then state present. Um, and then there's two other ones. So we'll also install um, requests module via pip. So Ansible built in a pip name requests and state present. And then the last one that we'll need to install is proxmoxer, um, which is what this um, 
module on Ansible we'll be using for it to connect. So ansible.builtin.pip name proxmoxer and state present. So that will be all the prereqs that we'll need for this machine essentially, um, this build machine to run what we're going to use for this collection. Um, so there's a lot in here and it is, can actually be a very confusing, especially depending on what you're trying to do and how you're doing it. Um, because some of the stuff you can use, but you can't use them all in the same task essentially. Um, and I can, I'll explain that more as I kind of write through it. Um, but if you're looking at the documentation, you can continue looking here. Um, but what we have, um, here will be. Um, we will clone proxmox template. So we'll do community general proxmox KVM. And, and this is what this community general, this, this is, that's what this is right here. Um, community general proxmox KVM module. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, and you can see down in the example, same thing. Then from there, what we'll do is enter the stuff that you would essentially need to know. So uh, the node is the host that you want to put it on. So I named my node Proxmox. And the other thing is we can log in here real quick and I can show you essentially what it looks like. Um, and color theme doc. So what we have here is essentially um, the node. So this node here is proxmox, um, and that's what we have. Um, so from there, what we'll want to do is API user. Um, so this will be root at PAM. Um, and, and the reason for this is because it's just using the PAM authentication and we're using the user as root. So we're going to leave that as that. Um, then the API password. Um, so instead of, I'm not going to do any like API tokens really, I'm just using the username and password, but we will variableize this so we can use Proxmox credentials uh, or Ansible credentials to essentially use pass in this variable um, so that essentially you can use it um, without people knowing what the password is. Um, API host, so that would just be the host um, IP. API port should just be the default um, port, which is 8006, unless you would change it. Um, and then what we'll do is storage, which will be our local LVM, um, which essentially if you were to look at storage in your server view, you got your storage and local LVM is my storage. But if you have a different name, that would, that's what it would be. Um, let's see. And then what we'll want to use is full. So we will do a full clone instead of a um, partial clone. Um, so set that to true. Um, the other thing is we'll put the pool in Dragon. So I, I created separate pools. You don't necessarily need this, but I have separate pools. So I got my dragon pool and then my home lab pool. I like to just separate it out a little bit for, so I know which ones are things for my videos versus what's for my home lab. Then we got what we will be cloning and this will be the name of the clone. So in this case, I have dragon OL8 template and that's what it will be. So we'll put paste that in. Um, and then the name, which is the VM name that you would want um, after this. So we'll just name the VM name in here like that. Um, and that should essentially set all you need for the actual cloning of the virtual machine. So this will just clone into a new machine. Um, but what we'll need to do is actually add a few things because we want the virtual machine to also start after it's done cloning, right? So we'll actually put in a pause real quick. Ansible built-in pause. Um, and we'll pause for uh, sec 10 seconds before we use the module to start the VM. So in this case, we'll do community general 
Proxmox KVM again. And we'll essentially copy and paste most of you know the beginning stuff um, to, to start off with um, because that's just the authentication. Um, the pool is dragon and what we'll want is the name. So it's going to be based off of the name. So we'll make sure the name is VM name. So it'll take the same variable. And then the different thing here would be started. Um, so you can't actually use the state started with the VM clone up here. Um, I don't know why, but that's just kind of one of the interesting things to note. Um, but so we'll clone the VM, which will create a new VM. We'll wait 10 seconds, then we'll start it to make sure you know the cloning finished. Um, and then what we'll do is do another wait here um, to pause before it tries to SSH in and configures the networking and the host name. So we'll wait 20 seconds. Um, this can obviously be longer if your if your Proxmox isn't you know as quick. Um, mine is super quick because I'm running it on a minis form um, with DDR5 RAM. Um, and a very fast NVMe. Um, so I, I definitely have the speed and power. So, but if you need it, you can do like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, however long you, it usually would take for it to essentially start up and be able to SSH in. So that's what we have here. So not too much to this, but what we will do here is um, update proxmox config. Uh, server creation and we will commit that so before we finish this off essentially what we need to do is also create a new credential type um, so unlike how we have it um, there isn't like a VMware credential type so we'll create ours um, so we'll just name it proxmox um, so we have the fields that we we'll want and what we'll do here is ID proxmox pass. It will be a type string. We'll have the label be proxmox pass as well. Um, and secret is true because it's a password. Um, and then we'll set the required um, to also be that this is a required field. So proxmox pass is a required field. Then the injector configuration. So we'll just set this so that it's essentially can be used as an extra variable. So proxmox pass, it will be the variable name and we'll use proxmox pass as it. And we can hit save. So then from here, we can create a new credential, add credential, and we'll name it proxmox. Uh, you can select, select your organization. Then we'll go to credential types. We can do Proxmox, which is what we just created. And then you type in the Proxmox password that you would use to connect to your Proxmox and hit save. Then we'll update our template. So my create VM template. So technically we don't need the vCenter cloud credential anymore. So we can remove that. We'll look at credentials. We'll look for Proxmox, select Proxmox and hit save on that as well. So um, after that, I think we're pretty much golden to essentially attempt to create a VM. Um, so let's take a look here. I deleted a lot of my VM. I didn't, I, I didn't migrate all my VMs over. Um, so we can, I, I, I would say our latest VM that we created um, is probably a good VM. So uh, Morphos, um, is what we can use. And let me double check the IP of that real quick as well. Um, because we're just, we'll just recreate that here. So dragon zone and Morphos 117. So what we can do here is create VM. So we got the VM name, um, and this will be, you know, dragon Morphos. Uh, did I spell that right? Yeah. And then the IP. 172.16.1.117. And then the host name we'll just want as Morphos. So we'll hit next and launch. And this is the, the moment of truth where I question my life to see whether or not I actually did this right off the top of my head. 
um, with some documentation. So it will log into our build server, install Python 3 pip, get make sure setup tools is installed, request installed, proxmoxer is installed. Um, then we'll clone the proxmox template here. Um, and if it times up, that will be very awkward. But hopefully, um, so, oh, here we go. So we see VM133, uh, 133, um, which is Dragon Morphos. So you can see it's actually spinning up over here. Um, then it will wait for 10 seconds, start the VM. So the VM should be starting while we wait two seconds for it, or 20 seconds. So you can see it's actually uptime now is 14 seconds. It's started. And then after 20 seconds here, it will configure the IP and then configure um, the host name. Oh, oh, that that is the other thing that I forgot actually. So, so this uh, interface doesn't exist. It's actually um, 18. Um, I forgot doing Proxmox. The interface uh, names are different actually. Um, so let's update that real quick. Create VM, edit, but that's an easy fix. So the interface should be 18 on, on this now. Um, so update interface, commit. All right. So that will essentially load now, but what we'll do um, while that happens is we'll uh, stop this and delete it and we'll just recreate it one more time which makes it actually very simple. So I can delete, remove, one, two, three, we'll purge everything, destroy everything. And it is gone now. So once this inventory and everything syncs, we can do it again. So we'll create a new VM, Dragon Morphos 117 and Morphos. Next and launch. It will essentially repeat and do the same thing, but it'll succeed in changing <laughs> the interface to be the IP that you want. And you can see that um, these are now okay because my build machine has all these already installed. So it'll just say, okay, nothing has changed, which is amazing um, because it makes things item potent. So essentially tasks don't take as long because they don't uh, need to reinstall. So we got the server back up again, a new one created from the VM, uh, from the template. Um, it should start here now, so starting VM. We'll wait 20 seconds, so it's starting again. We can close that tab out. And then after 20 seconds, it'll finish creating, and then we should be good. Give it 20 seconds, clearly. All right, so now it's logging in. Uh, it fails to connect to that IP which is interesting. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, the, the reboot always, always fails. That's why it skips. Sorry. <laughs> um, so it, it reboots so that it can reconnect to the new IP. So wait for reboot and it's all finished now. So technically what I can do, um, and I just reinstalled Tabby because I, I'm on a new, new machine as well. Um, so bear with me while I, uh, uh, open up a new terminal here. Um, and I know that is very small, so let me make it significantly bigger so that you guys can read. Um, and what we can do is shroot at morphphos.dragon.local now, which should appear. And we can accept the key and log in. So you can see now um, that this exists. Um, I guess I can just do IP address. And we're running on 117. So now the server essentially is good and all my you know next playbooks like installing docker docker compose um and all that should be able to connect to it and install so that's pretty much it in regards to uh setting up a new uh, uh virtual machine from a proxmox template so if you enjoyed the video please leave a like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video bye